right. Hey, everybody. It's 7 o'clock here on Friday. Yes. Yes. You know what time it is. It's time for the Audience Adventure Radio Hour. Yeah. That's right. I'm your host, Bennett Williamson. My co-host, Tad Lechman, here on mic four. Hello, Tad. Hello, Bennett. Hi. And we have, joining us once again, Page Lord, Page Scribe. The, on, it's Annika the Page Keeper. Good evening. Thank you for helping keep us on track. So, listeners, if it's your first time hearing the show, let me tell you what the heck is going on. We are going to be reading from a story in which we have choices to make and we're going to need your help to make them. You can do that by calling 831-459-4036. You can text that number as well. Uh, we're going to need your help as we go on this audience adventure. So stick with us. I think tonight's going to be some superhero drama. Right here on KZSC, 831-459-4036. It's the Audience Adventure Radio Hour, right around the corner. KZSC. Listen, everybody. Hey. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Friday everybody. Night. Hey, <laughs> everybody out there. Listen up. Oh, man. So here on the Audience Adventure Radio Hour, we bring you a new adventure every week. And this week, we are going to be reading from another Matt Youngmark book called Thrusts of Justice. Um Big shout out to Matt Youngmark. He's a writer and illustrator who writes his own choose a series of books where you as the audience and we, all of us together, are going to choose our way along the story as we go here over the next hour. So again, we're going to need your help to call or text 831-459-4036. How are you doing tonight, Tad? I'm doing well. What I like about this book is, in addition to the normal kind of choose our direction of the narrative According to the cover of this book, we actually get to choose one of three superheroes Ooh. to be along the way. And, I like this as a selling point, die one of 81 humiliating deaths. <laughs> so, we'll see how many of those deaths we can get through this evening, or avoid. If you missed us two weeks ago, we read from Matt Youngmark's Time Travel Dinosaur. Which was very fun. We turned into a dog, we... T- turned into a T-Rex. We did. We ate some other T-Rexes, I think. We were eaten. We were, were we? yeah, I think so. We went through a portal. Yeah. There, was, there was a lot of things <laughs> happening. <laughs> so if uh, if that was any <laughs> prediction of what we're going to get into, we better jump into it right away we here. Should. So here we go. This is Thrusts of Justice from Matt Youngmark. And uh, Tad, why don't you take us away? I would be happy to. The truth is, you never really wanted to be a reporter anyway. Sure, you've been single-mindedly working toward a job in journalism since junior high, but it wasn't out of a true passion for the news or anything. It's because reporters get to hang out with superheroes. And you realize at the age of 12 that short of tragically murdered billionaire parents or freak accident involving radioactive waste, superhero probably wasn't going to be a viable career path. Man, screw the Cleveland Tribune, Dale says. After we make a billion dollars with a Cleveland News Explosion dot com, we'll be the darn Cle- we'll buy the darn Cleveland Tribune and fire all those guys. Have another drink, Dale. That's Mella. She's just an inebriated she's just as inebriated judging from the number of empty whiskey glasses in front of her, but it carries better. 
The three of you are having what's essentially the same argument at the same bar for the 11th consecutive day since being laid off by your, com- by your common employer. Theoretically, you're exploring the idea of launching a website. But deep down, you all know it's empty talk. Mm -hmm. Drunken rambling about the internet is just what unemployed journalists do. (laughs) This is a prescient book. (laughs) Today, however, we'll offer a break in your routine debauchery. Before you can flag down the bartender for another round, the room is flooded with intense white light, followed by a strange sense of weightlessness that makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up on end. How drunk are you? (laughs) A deep, soft voice calls out from what feels like the inside of your head rattling your fillings. They're coming. What? Who's coming? Heed my words. The voice continues. They're coming and you alone can stop them. The way forward is twisted and there is very little time. So do not hesitate. Choose your actions carefully. The fate of this world is in your hands. The light subsides and the voice fades away with it. You silently meet your friend's eyes and find that they're shaken up as you are. Whatever that was, it knocked the drunk right out of you. Heed my words, Dale mutters. Who talks like that? (laughs) (laughs) In case an ominous psychic warning isn't enough, suddenly the entire bar shakes from a concussive blast. Gainful employment or not, your reporter's instincts kick in and you leap from your bar stool to investigate. Outside, you see pedestrians fleeing in all directions from a smoking crater in the middle of the street and three unmistakable figures dotting the landscape. The first is an enormous man in a horned helmet who you recognize as the Ox, a famous New York supervillain. He's carrying several large unmarked bags and you realize that much of the rubble comes from the busted through wall of a bank building directly behind him. The second is a cloaked figure with glowing eyes, Night Watchman, Mm. the most mysterious of the whole crop of costumed heroes. His modus operandi is to hide in the darkness and strike terror in the hearts of criminals. He's old school and seriously badass. (laughs) The second is a cloak... Oh, sorry. And inside the crater itself is a figure in some sort of high-tech battle armor. Could that be the Cosmic Guardian? He's a legendary hero who disappeared sometime in the mid-90s. From the look of things, he appears to have just saved downtown Cleveland from a stray meteor. Superheroes and villains right in front of your favorite bar. <laughs> the three of them are exchanging glances, and you're pretty sure you're about to witness a super powered smackdown. But then the Guardian launches into the air, sputtering off on a wild trajectory, and from the sound of things, crashing back to Earth a few blocks over. Night Mochman disappears into an alley, leaving the ox alone amid the chaos. What the heck is going on here? Could a simultaneous meteor strike and bank robbery be a pure coincidence? If he's not here to battle the Ox, what could Night Watchman possibly be doing in Cleveland? (laughs) Mela is the first to say what you're all thinking. If you two still want to start that website, I think we've got our first story. We should split up, Dale says. Sirens are approaching, which means the Ox is about to go toe-to-toe with Cleveland's finest. That's front-page news for sure. Cell phone video of the ox in action would generate the kind of page views a typical startup news site could only dream of. Then again, the darkness lurking, fear-inspiring reason you always wanted to be a superhero just fled down that alley. And a long-missing champion may have saved the city from a meteor. That's some big-time interplanetary space hero stuff right there. Which lead should you follow? Hmm, all right, listeners. We need your help. Which lead should we follow? If you stay put and report on the ox situation, turn to page six, and there's a big illustration of the ox just smashing stuff to rubble here. (laughs) If you chase after the night watchman, turn to page eight. And if you track down the cosmic guardian instead, 
turn to page 11. So you're going to want to call 831-459-4036. You can also text that number if you want. Which way should we go? Should we, should we report on the ox, uh, chase after the night watchman, and track down the cosmic guardian? So the ox and the night watch, those are super villains, it seems. Night watchman, I think, is a hero. Oh. Did I miss <laughs> Cosmic me? guardian is hero, definitely a hero. hero from the 90s. Are you into super villains? Are you into superheroes? 831 459 4036. You can call or text. What do, who are you interested in, Tad? Um, I mean, I kind of want to find, find out what's happening with the Cosmic Guardian who's been missing. Yeah, that's right. Coming back. What do you think, Annika? Same. I want to see super space stuff. That sounds fun. Well, what I mean, what do you think about the prospect of launching a online news website in Cleveland in 2012, which I think is... It's really funny. <laughs> <coughs> and I'm sure it was on the minds of lots of journalists yeah, at tough, that point. Tough time. Probably a better idea to publish. I mean, you know, if you could get into self-publishing, why not write your own, choose your own adventure book? That would be instead. <laughs> instead of trying to make a clickbaity website. 831-459-4036. Well, we got two votes for Cosmic Guardian. If anyone really wants to follow the Night Watchman... Liking it's chiming in on Instagram here. Liking it if you want to see the ox. Yeah. We might have to go with Cosmic Guardian. Page 11, shall we? Let's, yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's go. By the way, guys, I just got this <laughs> synthesizer. <laughs> I switched synthesizers from last week. And, uh, you know, this one has lots of new sounds. Whoa. But, you know, you might... <laughs> You might catch me pressing the wrong button a few times during today's show, but, you know, it's more exciting that way, for sure. That's a good explosion right there. <clears throat> All right, Cosmic Guardian, here we come. Mila and Dale can stick around and report on the local angle if they want. As far as you're concerned, superheroes from outer space trump anything that's happened in the entire state of Ohio, ever. You hazard a guess as where the Cosmic Guardian if that was the Cosmic Guardian, might have landed based on the erratic flight path and miscellaneous crashing noises. It's not an exact science, but after canvassing a few blocks, you spot a thin column of smoke wafting out of a broken window on the fifth floor of an apartment building. That's a pretty good bet. Some teenage stoner is standing in, front, in the front entryway as you approach it, so you scoot past him and head up the stairs. The building isn't in great shape and is apparently the kind of place where you can crash through a plate glass window without making a stir. Because when you arrive on the fifth floor, panting and sweating, thank you very much, you don't see a single concerned tenant mm. milling about in the hallway. Okay, the smoke was coming from the third window, so apartment 503 or 505? You take your best guess and knock gently on a paint crack door. Uh... Hello? Is everything all right inside there? The door shutters violently, as if someone on the inside had smacked it with a baseball bat or unlocked it with an energy beam. You gingerly test the knob and find that it's open. Hmm. Lying by the window is an armored figure with one arm stretched towards you, still smoldering. The battle suit is bulkier than you remember from the old posters in your childhood bedroom, but from the gleaming blue metallic polymer and pattern of circuits on the arms and chest, there's no question. This is the Cosmic Guardian. <gasps> His helmet is open, revealing a pale, emaciated face crisscrossed with blue veins. Keep it secret, he says in a whisper. There's a flash of light, and the man inside the suit literally dissolves into smoke before your eyes. His empty armor remains frozen in position. Then its arm suddenly stretches toward you. You try to leap out of the way, but it strikes you in the chest, knocking you to the floor. Struggling to get up, you feel the suit envelop your entire body. <laughs> For a moment, everything goes black. Then... The room in front of you crackles into view, tinted green and overlaid with a horizon line and various digital prompts and readouts. Before you can get your bearings, the suit launches you off the floor and out the broken window. You're flying! And utterly out of control, you don't feel any sense of motion inside the armor, but the city quickly disappears beneath you. A voice pops into your head. It seems to be bypassing your ears and streaming directly into your mind. And yet somehow has the feeling of an educational film from the 1950s. 
In Respect 197, rather you can get Selection Sector Galaxy Delicious, and this is called Brown. It says, what? It's gibberish. And it's not audio exactly, but nevertheless, you can almost hear the announcer's booming, cheesy tenor and the crackling of an old projector. You have expected to give you a stern warning about auto safety or syphilis. Not an easy task. The message continues. And if you do, there is only a great life. You, congratulations, you and the mercy of the universe. Whatever translation software this thing uses clearly needs a lot of work. You continue to rocket skyward, breaking through the Earth's atmosphere, traveling onward until the entire globe is within your field of vision. Crisp blue oceans and the contours of continents visible through a swirl of clouds. Holy crap. It's magnificent. And you're not at all sure what the suit is trying to tell you, but if it's asking you, it, but if it's asking if you want to be the new cosmic guardian, the answer is yes. With that thought, you feel something click. You wiggle your arms and discover that you can move them effortlessly as if, well, as if floating in space. You concentrate on changing course and slowly the earth starts getting larger on your helmet's view screen. You're pretty sure you just became a superhero. What now? You happen to know that a villain just held up a bank somewhere down there in Cleveland. Stopping that sort of thing is what superheroes are supposed to do, but you consider the dying words of the suit's previous owner. Keep what secret? Your civilian identity? The entire existence of the Guardian armor? Should you try to keep things on the down low and stay out of the public eye until you have a better handle on what's going on? Hmm. Hmm. All right, listeners. Listen up. We're going to need your help with this choice. So, onward to battle. If you charge ahead and stop the ox before he gets away with his nefarious scheme, we'll go to page 18. That would be impulsive and irresponsible. If you retreat to safety and use your skills as a journalist to dig up some information on the Cosmic Guardian Mm. before doing anything rash, turn to page 46. Oh, so research or action. That's right. 831-459-4036. That's the number. You call or text. Help us on this choose-your-own-adventure style adventure here. Yes. We need to... We need to figure out which untimely death we're going to go towards. <laughs> Should we go onward to battle and on to page 18 or go back and do some research? Oh, someone's coming. We got a text coming in now. It says, do journalism with a ah. with <laughs> exclamation point. And also anyone texting in, make sure uh, put your name in there oh, yeah. so I can I can give you credit for your your good uh, your good <laughs> ideas. Well, we got a call coming in. Let's see. Hold on there. Let's see. All right. Caller, hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Can you turn down your radio a little bit, please? I'm listening to this. Yeah, good. Can you hear me? What's your name? Yeah, I can hear. My name's Yelin. Yelin? Yeah. What up, Yelin? How you doing? Where are you calling from? Uh, Around the Monterey area. Okay, cool. So, Yelin, have you been listening to the story? Uh huh. And so, what do you think? So we're in a we we just got into the the cosmic guardian suit. Should we go fight to battle, or should we go back and some, dig up some info, some research? Yeah. I think the better choice is journalism because you should listen to the guy. Plus, okay, you rush. In, you could get injured, and you could do a lot of this more. Um, you could do something. Like, you could do more damage than help. Oh, yeah, it's, it's true. That's very pragmatic. It's very yes. rational. Yes. Uh, we got another vote for research, too, Yilin. Someone texted in to say that they also want to do some research, and Spencer's voting for it. So, um, I, I think, think we got to research. Yeah. All right. Hey, Yilin, stay on the yeah. phone, okay? Yeah. We're going to go figure out what happens when we go do some research. So, we're going to turn to page 64. 46. Oh, 40 or 46. Use the hyperlinks. Look at that. There I am. <laughs> okay, here we go. The Cosmic Guardian told you to lie low with his honest-to-God dying breath. Maybe you should listen, at least until you figure out what's going on here. You use your slightly shaky understanding of, the, of world geography to locate Cleveland on the globe and head straight for your apartment. After about 15 minutes of trying to figure out how to remove your gauntlets so you can type... 
They retract <laughs> into the suit's arm plates, which is pretty cool. You're puttering around on your laptop, which yeah. is what you'd be doing on a normal weekday afternoon, even if you weren't <laughs> mostly encased in alien <laughs> cybernetics. <laughs> You turn up plenty about the Cosmic Guardian's adventures, but very little regarding his disappearance. Even his old teammates don't seem to know what happened to him. One quote from the Human Torpedo sums it up. Those space heroes were like that. You know, always coming and going. <laughs> Most people don't remember this, but the Cosmic Guardian wasn't the first. The space police or whatever sent him to replace <laughs> Dogstar, the savior from Sirius. Nice guy, Dogstar. Although, frankly, I never really understood what the hell he was talking about. But one day, he's just dead. And the Guardian shows up. I kind of expected another one to come, out, come after. He finally split. But I guess the space cops figured out <laughs> that when we had things under control. Then the interview mostly degenerates into a plug for Oceanopolis, the ill-fated theme park Torpedo lent his name to when he retired <laughs> back in 97. You recall seeing Dogstar in a group in group photos of the old Liberty Patrol, but never knew he had any connection to the Cosmic Guardian. Before you can type Dogstar into Google, <laughs> you hear a knock at the door, accompanied by a shrill, all-too-familiar voice. I know you're in there! Your neighbor, Mrs. Plinkett, <laughs> shouts from the porch. You freeze. I saw you come home. I'm not blind, you know. Wait a minute, she saw you? Flying out of the clear blue sky, decked out in full body space armor, your visor closes completely of its own volition, and the gauntlets <laughs> that took so long to coax off your fingers snap back into place. I check with the landlord, your neighbor says. You're not allowed to have robot suits in the building, so you just so you know. <laughs> no, no, no. Mrs. Plinkett is an incorrigible gossip. If she realizes you're the cosmic guardian, it'll be on the nightly news by six o'clock. She keeps knocking, and two little missiles pop up out of your armored shoulders, humming as if ready to launch. <laughs> the suit is responding to your panic and gearing up for battle. You need to calm yourself before you accidentally carpet bomb the place. <sighs> Deep breaths. Okay, so listen up, listeners. Thanks, Elon, for calling in. We got we got room for another caller. 831-459-4036. If you grab your laptop and flee out the black door, we're going to turn to page 63. But if you stay and try to control the damage before Mrs. Pinkett shares your secret identity with the entire apartment complex or the world, we're going to turn to page 112. So it's like run or try to talk your way run. out of it with yep. your, to your nosy neighbor. Hmm. 831-459-4036. That's the number you want to call or text. <laughs> She's going to tell everybody. Yeah. I like this guy, uh, the... the Oh, dog torpedo or Tor dog? Yeah. <laughs> I want to meet Dogstar. I have a feeling we might meet Dogstar. All right, and hey, caller, you're on the air on the Audience Adventure Radio Hour. Hello. Ooh, it's Charlie. I have a, I have a suggestion. Oh, hi, Charlie. Woo! This I'm is so happy to get to call in. Charlie from Oakland, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Char or Charlie the librarian. Ooh. Yes. So. That would be. <laughs> oh, this is my friend Charlie, you guys. So, Charlie. Are we going to flee, or do you want to stay and try to talk to your neighbor? You're such a nice guy. So if I, if, if I was thinking about what Charlie would do, it would definitely be just, like, be really nice and have a nice, thoughtful chat with his neighbor. But I'm curious. You're Charlie, so you should probably... You know, you <laughs> predicted me really well. I think that's what we should try to do, is to have a thoughtful chat and try to work it out with the power of words. Maybe she becomes our cool sidekick. I mean, we're yeah. journalists... Uh -huh. So we should have a pretty good command of words. Uh -huh. Well, coming in on the text, Charlie, Buzz from Aptos says, I don't trust our social skills. We should flee. Well, what do you, who's your favorite superhero, Charlie? Oh, my God. Oh, that's such a good question. I don't think I really have one, to be totally honest, but if there was one who had the superpower to be able to peel any label... Ooh. Ooh. That's who I would go with. Like when when you're trying to dig under the corner with your nail or whatever yeah. and you just can't. Yeah. And it leaves exactly. the adhesive behind every time. Oh, oh man. Yeah. That's yeah. The worst. Exactly. So my most, yeah. My like banal superpower like that most recently that I thought of was the ability to throw a, fris a frisbee and hit anything like within line of sight. Yeah. You know? Ooh. So you can be like, I bet I can get that from here, man. Yeah. Basically, yeah. you know? But only for frisbees. Like you could only just throw. Them. 
Well, Charlie, I'd say you you got the guts to call in. Yeah. So let's let's turn to page one twelve and see yes. what happens with Mrs. Pinkett. So Charlie, do you have a second? Can you stay with us? Yeah, I have a second. For one page? All right. Yeah, let's hit it. You promised a dying superhero you'd keep something safe. And besides, secret identity shenanigans are part of the job description, right? As you open the door, several more missiles (laughs) pop out of your shoulder plates, and a high-pitched whine starts to come from somewhere in your armor. Just calm down, you think. All you need here is a decent cover story. Warning, you say. Okay, maybe that was a little too (laughs) lost in space. The citizen who resides here is under the protection of the Cosmic Guard. Please return to your home and stay there until you receive notice that this area has been secured. There, that that should do it. (laughs) Mrs. Pinkett just stands there staring. I know it's you. She says. You don't think I recognize your voice from when you have people over and stay up all night making all those noises? That was one time, like three years ago. (laughs) Crap. I mean, danger, Will Robinson. She starts wagging her finger. I didn't say anything when you had that cat in there. She says, for the record, uh, you know for a fact that Miss Pinkett called the landlord several times about the cat and tried to have you evicted. But this is going too far. I'm calling the police right now. If she makes that phone call, your secret identity is as good as blown. Your armor is shaking now, and in addition to the missiles, crackling balls of blue energy are starting to form in the palms of your gauntlets. No! (laughs) All right, Charlie, here's your option. Screw it. (laughs) If you just just blast her, we'll turn to page 192. (laughs) What? No! If you believe that being a superhero means even the smallest amount of casual murder is unacceptable, (laughs) turn to page 205. Hmm. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> it's a pretty stark so contrast like, of decisions. <laughs> do you, yeah, do you, are you going to double down on, on being nice? or? Oh, my God. She hasn't what been big... great in the past as a neighbor. She, well, she, she called the she reported the landlord on you, but didn't successfully get you admitted or, or, uh, or evicted. evicted. Yeah, that's true. But she tried in her heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in her heart. We are in a housing crisis. Let's just blast her. <laughs> <laughs> I, All right. A, Turn to page 192. Well-reasoned decision, Charlie. Should we should we let you go or do you want to Yeah, I have to drive. Take my answer off the air. Okay. This has been fabulous. Thanks Thank for you, calling Charlie. In, Charlie. Take care. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. All right, let's blast our neighbor. What are we ready? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to admit that for a moment it feels really good <laughs> to just let those missiles fly. Then you look at the charred remains of Mrs. Pinkett standing outside next to the mailboxes and are instantly horrified at what you've done. You just straight up murdered a lady. You panic for a few minutes, then decide to flee the scene. But the moment you launch into the air, something slams you right back down into the, onto the cement walkway. Boom. It feels as if weights are pressing down on every inch of your body. Yeah, there it you is. You can't see much with your face pressed against the ground. But you hear a woman's voice somewhere to the left of you. We have a rogue guardian, she says. I repeat, the cosmic guardian has gone rogue. Oh no, that would be Gravity Bomb of the Justice Squadron. (laughs) Gravity Bomb. And a moment later, she's joined by a second voice. Cosmic Guardian, the voice booms. That would be Magnifico, the Justice Squadron's leader. Missing for 15 years and now you show up killing old ladies? Tisk. You should know better than that. You try to speak, but it's difficult with your personal gravity increased hundredfold. Plus, you can't deny that you did go somewhat rogue. After all, Magnifico continues, you were the one who made sure we'd have a way to neutralize each squadron member in case anyone went broken arrow. You feel something clamp onto your back, and suddenly an electrical shot shorts out your armor. I just never thought it would be you. As the suit shuts down, the automatic force field that was keeping the increased gravity from smooshing your body into a fine pulp shuts down with it. I always kind of hoped it would be, though. (laughs) The end. (laughs) The end. All right, we got to get the vocoder right for the first the end. Let's see if we can take a moment. (laughs) <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> that one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. 
<laughs> so we've reached our first end point in the book, but Annika is here tracking our progress. So it's easiest so we can rewind, rewind, and go back. Thank you, Annika, the page what, keeper. Uh, what page were we on before? Uh, we were on. Let's see. Well, I don't remember the page we were on, but the next page we could go to was 205 and not blast the old lady. 205 to not blast the new Okay. Neighbor. Let's pick it up. Thanks for nothing, Charlie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. He's a peaceful man, Charlie. He's a nice man. So, you know, if we need to live through, live out our violent fantasies, uh, at least we can do it from a book on public sure. radio. You That's know, right. Community radio. All right. So... We're going to go to 205. Okay. Killing Miss Pinkett isn't an option. You try to interrupt her call, but she's already reached an operator. She clearly has the Cleveland Police Department on speed dial. I'd like... Oh, take no, it away, like, Mrs. Pinkett. I'd like to report that my neighbor has a giant robot suit. Yes, it's Clara Pinkett. It is too an emergency. <laughs> you go back inside, shut the door behind you, and try to tune out her breathless efforts to reach various network news channels, you decide that Mrs. Pinkett isn't going to convince anyone of anything other than a questionable grip on sanity and get back to your research. Before long, though, a new reference to the Cosmic Guardian pops up on some gossip blog. Oh, no. Sure enough, the post is about a woman in Cleveland who insists that her next-door neighbor has been flying around in a suit that fits the description of the long-vanished hero. It goes viral. Oh, no. Within minutes, it's all over the Internet. And one site even publishes your address and apartment number. We got doxxed. You're staring in disbelief at a picture of yourself on the screen Aww. from your middle school yearbook. Oh, no. When you hear another knock. Oh, crap. You holler something about, be right there, and hurry to get out of your armor. <laughs> it takes what feels like forever, but you finally get the suit stuffed into a closet and answer the door, half expecting to find a television news crew outside. What you find instead are more than 100 alien beings decked out in full Cosmic Guardian armor, <laughs> waiting patiently. You gasp. <gasps> Before your mind can even process what you're seeing, they each raise a hand, or in several cases, a weird alien appendage, and burn you to a crisp with a blast of energy. Good job keeping it secret, champ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Seems like this branch of the... Mrs. Messing with Mrs. Plinkett. I I, th I feel like we should have gone to uh, fight the ox. Should we jump all the way back there? Oh, Annika, the page keeper. Yes, How do we page 18. <laughs> page 18 to fight the ox? Yep. Do, 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 back we go. Scrolling all the way. Page 18. All, all right, you want to pick it up, Todd? Yes. And once again, this is the Audience Adventure Radio Hour right here on KZSC Santa Cruz, 88.1 FM, and we're online at kzsc.org. Um, and when we get to decision points here, once we stop dying, <laughs> uh, we'll need your call or text at 831-459-4036. Page 18, is that where we're? We are. Mm -hmm. All right, and we're reading from <coughs> Thrusts of Justice by Matt Youngmark. Two words. Super-powered battle suit. Oh, yeah. Technically, that may be anywhere between two and four words, but grammar is the type of thing you started caring about after you gave up your dream of fighting for truth, justice, and at the tender age of 12. <laughs> now that the dream lives again, the last thing you intend to do is research. <laughs> you, will, you will yourself back toward the planet, pushing through the atmosphere within moments... After a few navigation-related errors, honestly, Lake Ontario looks about the same as Lake Erie from this attitude, <laughs> altitude, you find Cleveland and swoop down to the front of, of the bank. It looks like someone swallowed a city block and barfed it back up. Flattened police cars litter the street, and there's some kind of gooey purple splat at the bottom of the meteor's impact crater. Perhaps you should contact Hazardous Waste Disposal about that. You rush to a fallen officer to see if he needs help, and although his face is a mess of bruises and abrasions, he flashes you an incompletely toothed grin <laughs> and gestures with his thumb down the street. White van, he wheezes. That's all you need to know. You launch back into the sky and scan traffic for a vehicle, vehicle matching that description. He headed away from the freeway, so he doesn't seem to be... Wait! Wait a second. Bingo! 
you spot the van pulling into a motel a couple of miles away from the bank and see the ox climb out of it as you zoom to intercept. It's business time. (laughs) Stop where you are, you say as you make your landing just behind him. Your voice comes booming out of the suit through some sort of loudspeaker, giving you a deep resonance that you don't normally possess. It's kind of awesome. Huh? The ox turns and looks you over. What the hell are you supposed to be? I am the Cosmic Guardian. You use your most authoritarian tone. Surrender and you will not be harmed. Wait, I've heard of you. He looks unimpressed. You're the dead one, right? (laughs) Missing, you say. In space. I'm back now. Man, your super barrel banter is just awful. Lay down your weapons. What? These weapons? He balls up his hands into two enormous fists. Okay. (laughs) The ox lunges, but you leap into the air and hover just out of his reach. You recall correctly, the Cosmic Guardian's force beam should be strong enough to stop a tank. You concentrate, and a ball of blue light forms in the palm of your hand. Tingly. With an outstretched arm, you fire a blast of energy that shakes your entire body. When it subsides, the ox is standing there unfazed. My turn, he says. With a truly impressive vertical leap, he grabs one of your legs and pulls you to the earth, which you hit like a steel-plated sack of meat. Oof. (laughs) Your suit absorbs the impact, but he pins you to the ground and follows with a punch to the chest you can feel even through your armor. Uh Uh-oh. The blows start coming in rhythm, and each one... And with each one, your chest plate creaks and moans. Maybe if you work up a force blast strong enough to... BAM! Or if you can just get yourself airborne, then he'll... BAM! That last punch shorted out your visual display for a moment, making you... BAM! Okay, you're not sure how much more of this you can... BAM! (laughs) When you regain consciousness, you find yourself face down in a field, half covered with rocks and dirt. You feel like you've been run over by a train. As your systems slowly come back online, you realize you can't even see the motel from here. Did he throw you? You also note that there's a black helicopter on the ground 20 yards away, its rotor still spinning. A small man in a tweed jacket runs towards you, shouting over the chopper's noise. I'm so glad you're here. He pulls out a fancy little tablet computer and makes a note on it. We didn't know if the emergency signal would reach you. The helicopter starts powering down, allowing the man to lower his voice. I'm Agent Moretti, and you're Mr. Jensen? Or has the suit, um, changed possession? Sten Jensen? Ha! Back in journalism school, you did an exhaustive paper speculating on the secret identities of the Justice Squadron. Jansen was a Swedish athlete who went missing about the same time the Guardian disappeared. You knew it! However, you're still pretty confused about your beating. Are you supposed to be Stan Jensen? Was the secret you were was that the secret you're trying to keep? Inside the giant armored battle suit, you really could be anybody. And the speaker <laughs> makes you sound like James Earl freaking Jones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listeners. Here's where we need your help for the Audience Adventure Radio Hour. We've got two choices right now. If you tell Moretti, Agent Moretti, who just showed up, that you're Sten Jansen, mm-hmm. we're going to turn to page 181. But if you come clean and say that Jansen passed the suit onto you, turn to page 64. So 831 459 4036. That's the phone number here. You can call or text. We're on Instagram Live at Bennett for Senate if you oh, want to yeah. get a nice visual of Tad reading Hello. stories. You can chime in there. 831 459 4036. Call or text. So. Finally making some progress here. I know. But, so, journalism, is that a popular journalism school assignment? Speculate Spec- and research on... <laughs> well, in this <laughs> alternate universe, identities. I would think that makes sense. <laughs> I suppose. 831-459-4036. 8, 8, 8, Again, we can either tell this special agent that we are Sten Jansen. Lie. Or we can lie. Yeah. Yeah, we can lie or come clean. But I don't know. We don't know this guy. All we know about him is he has a fancy little tablet. That's true. He He's came out talking of a helicopter. about an emergency signal. Hmm. hmm. Who is this guy? He's Agent Moretti, if we, he's to be believed. Do you believe him, Tad? I don't know. Because he could be 
some sort of like black ops, like hmm. she agent of Shield type person. Sure, yeah. But he could. I don't know. I just don't know. Eight three one this, four five. This is why nine, we need the listeners to call in. Because <laughs> we don't know. What do you think, Annika? I mean, he seems official enough. <laughs> he knows oh. the guy's name. It's. I mean. It's true. I mean, he did kind of validate our our oh, journalism yeah. school theory about the actual the secret identity. He literally ali- arrived in a black helicopter. That mm. sounds official. That's that a, sounds he fun. did. Well, <laughs> the, the, the police and helicopter, man. That's a that's a trope, right? It is. Let's see. I think we got a. Oh, okay. So someone's chiming in on text says, "Let's impersonate." Hey, if you text in, make sure to make sure to send me your name. Put your name on the text so I can know who you are. Does that mean when we're reading, we would his say voice, that we're st- we have to use a, a fake Swedish accent? Well, I think we <laughs> sound like James Freakin', Earl Freakin' Jones. Freakin Jones. That's true. Yeah, where do you put the freaking in like a three James, name name, you know? James Earl Freakin' Jones. I think you got it. James Freakin' Freakin Earl Jones. Yeah, I think no, you did I think it right. you got it. I think that's right. You got it. Let's, so one it, vote for impersonate? We've got one vote for impersonate. So let's go. Let's tell Moretti that we are Sten, Sten Johnson. All right, that means we're going to page 181. All right, Bennett. here we go. What the hell? I'm Sten Jansen, you say. What's the emergency? Moretti shakes his head. Things are completely falling apart, he says. Then he mutters something into a device clipped to his jacket collar that you don't quite catch. The supervillain community is getting organized and planning something big. Plus, we have a traitor in one of the major superhero teams, so I don't know who I can trust. He pauses, looking you straight in the reflective visor. And right now I need people I can trust, like Sten Jansen, who I worked with for almost 15 years. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-oh. Rip this joker out of the suit, boys, and we'll get somebody dependable in it. Oh, sorry. Uh, (laughs) Before you can protest, something big rockets out of the sky and smashes you into the ground. It's another cosmic guardian, and it's quickly followed by two more. Oh, they must be the guardians of distant planets, though, because they aren't shaped like people, and their understanding of human anatomy seems iffy at best. Their efforts to separate you from the armor mostly involve scooping. Oh, no. So your excitement at meeting actual extraterrestrial life is dampened significantly by the chunks of flesh being oh. systematically torn from your body. <sighs> Needless to say, you don't survive the ordeal. Honestly, still the best superhero policy. Honesty. <laughs> you should write that down. Yes. <laughs> the end. Okay, so lying about our identity brought us to a horrible getting scooped out of our suit end. Ugh. Hey, I called it. <laughs> should, we, should we go back and try coming clean? Yes, and also thank you, uh, texters, for letting me mm. know that uh, the phone lines are clear now, so we can take oh, a call oh, at were, oh. 831-459-4036. Uh, but let's jump. Let's go ahead we'll and We'll have jump. another decision to make sooner. Yes. So what page we need to go back to? 64. That's the truth. 64, telling the truth. Thank you, Yay. page keeper. You are welcome. 64. Oh, page keeper, <laughs> tell us what page Here we, go. we have turned to. Rewinding time. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Okay, we need to get a drop for that. Yes. Um, <laughs> we need to work on that Sten one. Sten Jansen is dead, you say. He sacrificed himself, saving Cleveland from a meteor. I was there, and the suit just came to me. If Agent Moretti doubts your story, it doesn't show on his face. Nope. Then you're worthy of it. The Cosmic Guard has proven time and again that its judgment and honor are beyond reproach. In fact, that's why we signaled for you. Moretti explains that he works for a top secret government project and they've uncovered a conspiracy involving dozens of villains who've never been known to work together before. They've also found evidence of a potential superhero traitor. So they're reluctant to turn to the Justice Squadron or the Phenomenal Three. (laughs) It's really like old school rap names too. (laughs) It's been a long time, but we need the Cosmic Guard once again. He says. Our first priority is to stop the Ox. He's a lunkhead, but he's invulnerable to just about everything, including your built-in weaponry. In league with a criminal mastermind, he could become unstoppable. 
That explains the butt kicking, at least. Take this, Moretti says, handing you a small electronic device. Plug it into your helmet. It'll let us track your movements and keep us in constant contact. He gestures towards a helicopter with his thumb. I'll debrief you further on the way to headquarters. A job with the U.S. government would be a pretty sweet gig. <laughs> they have good uh, benefits, but... Oh, yeah. And it sounds <laughs> like they know a lot more about the whole Cosmic Guardian business than you do. Then again, how much do you know about this Moretti guy? Can you trust him? Hmm. We'll try not to use the knowledge that we have from <laughs> elsewhere in the book. So we're choices that we need help with listeners. Yes. Do we take the communicator and get in the helicopter? Mm-hmm. If we do, we'll pay, turn to page 172. Or, if you tell them already you'd rather remain a free agent for now, turn to page 58. Hmm. Hmm. So, so we I, don't have to lie, I guess. No. <laughs> we just decide whether we're going to trust him and go on the helicopter. Right. Or strike out on our own. Hmm. He definitely knows a lot about... He definitely advanced the plot a lot. He did. That's, so he's an effective narrative device, <laughs> if nothing else. Uh, but we need a listener to call in. Yes, 831-459-4036. Whoa, we got some long texts. Really? Yes. Oh. Okay, uh, this one sa- This is one from Mork Youngblatt, who says, this is totally real person, Mork Youngblatt, and I think you should get in the helicopter. Okay. And then someone else says, take the communicator. Uh and get in the helicopter. And then they said a lot more stuff. Oh, okay. Whoa. And anyways, wait, and and phones say they're still busy. Oh, man. Oh, wait, what? I got to learn how to work this thing, yeah, huh? Wait. Hold on. We're going to try and free up the line. Oh, okay. I think I got it now. Yep. Oh, I saw it fly. Yeah, here we go. All right. Hello, caller. Hello. Yes. Oh, thank you so much for reminding me that I don't know how to use the equipment here. <laughs> what is your name and uh, where uh, are you calling from? Uh, this is Buzz. Uh, from Aptos. Oh, Buzz and Aptos. Yes. Which way did what did you tell us to do on the last one? I think you were right. Um, I I, I was wrong. I said uh, do research. Oh, do just, oh do yeah, research. And oh. that was wrong. Well, it wasn't so. Yeah. You know, it's the right. But there's a chance for redemption, Buzz. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What do you think? Um, Where do you fall on this one, Buzz? I don't think we can trust him. Mm. Oh, the black helicopter, huh? Too much. Yeah. <laughs> Too much. All right. All right, it could Buzz. Be like a bomb we're putting in our head. Who knows? Whoa. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. You're, I think you're totally right. All so right. Be a free agent. We're going to page the yeah. turn. Page turn to page 58. 58. All right, Buzz, stay with us. I think we'll have another another one for you. So, you're going to need more than friendly reassurances from some skinny guy in a bad suit before you start taking orders from the government. Assuming he even works for the government, you notice that the helicopter is all black with no identifying marks. Um, why don't you just give me your contact info, and I'll call you a bit later, you say. Moretti hands you a business card, but he doesn't look pleased. Its sole feature is a phone number, which you don't find reassuring. Look, uh, we really need to get started right away, he says. Our top priority is... Right, the ox. I'm all over it. You launch into the air, quickly leaving man and helicopter behind. The more you ponder it, the less sure you are about Agent Moretti. You also realize that you're clutching his business card in your gauntleted hand. Hmm. Does your armor have pockets? Mm. <laughs> For now, you press the card up against your helmet's visor and try to memorize the number. Should this really be that difficult? Before you can check to see if your suit's AI has some kind of built-in Rolodex, you spot something approaching on the horizon. If that's a plane, you better get out of its flight path. You take a hard right, only to spot another shape coming from that direction. Fast. Could Moretti have sent goons after you? Does Moretti have goons? Pouring on the speed, you alter course and shoot straight up towards the stratosphere. Whereupon, you almost collide with a third bogey, tracking you from above. It veers out of your way and paces you, allowing a better look. The thing is shaped like a giant eyeball with tentacles, and you realize that its coloring and markings match your suit. A second figure draws up, and although this one is shaped like an enormous insect... It's also wearing cybernetic armor similar to your own. It's the Cosmic Guard. Dun, dun, dun. You ease back on the throttle, and within moments, you're surrounded by guardians of all shapes and sizes. Your inner geek is about to pee itself. You wanted superheroes? (laughs) Here's a whole freaking army of superheroes. And not just that, but alien superheroes. Bonafide, sentient life from elsewhere in the galaxy. You're overcome with pride at being given the chance to join their ranks. 
you're not sure if there's some sort of universal space greeting, so you just sort of hold up one <laughs> hand and wave. As one, the cosmic guardians each stretch a single appendage towards you and open fire. No! Oh. <laughs> the energy blasts hit you from all angles, shorting out the visual display on your visor. Everything goes black, and a burning smell fills your nostrils. The 1950s announcer guy starts gibbering in your brain again, but now he sounds more than a little panicked, and he's still making very little sense. But you can pick out some phrases. Evasive mover, uh, maneuver! And, uh, Flee! Surely this is all some kind of mistake. So, Buzz... If you try to communicate with the Cosmic Guard and convince them to hold their fire, we'll turn to page 211. But if you get the hell out of there as quickly as possible, we'll turn to page 166. Uh, <laughs> um, but... oh, Seemed God. like it was going um, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> All those cool aliens, you know? We're not dead yet. That's good. We were using, yeah. like, the international space greeting. What do you think, Buzz? We got about nine minutes left in the show. T- chance for maybe a couple more, yeah, a couple more choices here. Uh, I, I don't think we can convince them. So we're going to be pretty hostile. Get out of there. Yes, yeah, that'd be my vote. Also, by the way, totally real person, uh, Mork Youngblatt, yes, chimed in to say, "I think you should GTFO." So okay, let's I think that's do that. Page one sixty six. Okay. You make a mental note. If you ever encounter a group of aliens from across the galaxy, don't wave. <laughs> if it's a maneuvers, you shout into your helmet. There's no sense of motion, but in a moment, your view screen flicks back to life, and you find yourself careening wildly through the air. Is that intentional? Are you evading? Not well enough. You're briefly enveloped in, a, in one flash of blue light, then another. The voice in your head starts up again. Revive the following coordinated Bitushi momentum, it insists, <laughs> then spits out a string of numbers. What does that even mean? Is there an, There's another flash, and this time you feel your armor shake. Better ima- evasive maneuvers, you yell. <laughs> the voice just repeats itself. Oh, okay, do it, you say. <laughs> Nothing happens. Is it waiting for a specific command? Uh, Bitushi momentum, Go! <laughs> With a pop, everything goes white. You feel your armor begin to shift around you and, is so- and soon has reconfigured into a small pod. You can freely move your arms and legs inside the tiny chamber, but have no idea what's happening outside. Hello? <laughs> the suit doesn't respond. Is this the Batununi momentum? There doesn't seem to be any more energy blasts, at least. You start to get bored and check your phone messages, <laughs> but you can't get a signal. Then, after about eight minutes, you feel the armor shift back into its previous configuration. Beneath you, the giant flaming yellow surface of the sun. (laughs) You know that it takes the sun's rays eight or nine minutes to reach the Earth, which would indicate that you've been traveling at the speed of light. Whoa. But where are the rest of the Guardians? Can't they travel just as fast? You think it through. Assuming light speed is a universal constant, if they started mm-hmm, out three mm-hmm, seconds mm-hmm, behind, mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. could chase you forever and mm-hmm, always mm-hmm. be three seconds behind. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They couldn't even signal ahead and have someone cut you off at the pass unless their communications <laughs> could travel faster than light. Technically, you suppose they could stay on your tail until you starve to death in your little pod, but three cheers for interplanetary police squad having more important things to do with their time than that. Since they knew they couldn't catch you, they apparently didn't even try. Okay, what next? Your suit starts spouting gibberish again, something about safe harbor, a safe house. You realize that these can't be, re- can't be recorded messages. Your suit is communicating with you, or it's trying to at least. You have no idea why the Cosmic Guard attacked you, but your alien battle suit just saved your life. You try holding a conversation with it, but just get more telepathic gobbledygook. Telepathic? Hmm. Brainstem. A member of the Justice Squadron is a telepath. He might be able to get inside the suit's mind or get you a a better psychic reception or something. Then again, Moretti mentioned a traitor. Can you trust the squadron? Can you trust Moretti? You're fairly sure you can trust your suit. So maybe you should take its advice. Skip the Justice Squadron and find the safe house. All right, so we have decision point. And, well, you know what, listeners? We might have to leave this decision for next week. Yes! And by next week, I mean two weeks, actually. We yes. got next week off. Hannah's going to be filling in here for us on the Audience Adventure Radio Hour, where we've been reading from Matt Youngmark's Thrusts 
of justice. Man, excellent adventure. So much to discover. Uh, it's yeah. Wow. We might pick this one up, or maybe we'll go back to time travel dinosaur in two weeks. We'll we'll what. What? We t- ended a cliffhanger. Uh, uh, what? Uh, what kind of radio show would place? not resolve the cliffhanger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so maybe two weeks you'll find us back here. Same radio time, same radio place. Uh, you can check out Matt Youngmark's work at youngmark.com. Is that right? We we'll might want to make sure I get it right. For. Hmm. <laughs> Well, one thing we know is regardless of what we wind up reading when we come back, we're going to need your help. Yeah, we're going to need your help. Yeah, check out youngmark.com if you want to find out more about Matt Youngmark, the author of today's story, Thrusts of Justice. And yeah, we're going to need your help. Thank you so much to everyone who called in today. Uh, Yay. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) Yay. We did it. We died multiple times. Thank you to Annika, the page counter, the page lord. Very important. We needed you a lot <laughs> this mm. week. And uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone that called. Thank you, Mork Youngblatt. You rule as well. And you're a real person. This has been the <laughs> Audience Adventure Radio Hour right here on KZSC Santa Cruz. Check out the archive for two weeks on RadioFreeAmerica.org. They're back. Nice. You can stream us there. And, um, you know, we'll get a podcast going one of these days. I promise. I bet we will. We got these on deck. Stay tuned. Horn on the Cob, coming up next, right here on Community Radio, KZSC, Santa Cruz. For Tad, for Annika, Bennett Williamson, thank you for listening to the Audience Adventure Radio Hour. Come back next week, 7 o'clock, right here on KZSC, and we're at streaming.kzsc.org. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye. Bye.